Welcome to Hangar Talk, a video series of flying tips, comments, and anecdotes that promote airmanship, the artistry of flying with stick and rudder. Welcome to the third and final Hangar Talk in a three-part series titled Airmanship and Aerodynamics. In the previous two parts of the series, I established three points. The quality of training, not quantity of training, is a root cause of weak pilot proficiency and the unacceptably high occurrence of loss of control accidents while maneuvering. Bad pilot habits relating to the use of flight controls is a common hindrance to good pilot stick and rudder skills, to airmanship. I emphasize that poor habits actually develop because of how we train pilots. A better understanding of aerodynamics and flight controls is a definitive training aid to pilots who aspire to good airmanship and to becoming a safer pilot. In this final part three of the series, I will discuss a fundamental stick and rudder skill that is largely unknown rarely practiced. In fact, the skill is discouraged in pilot training. Ironically, I think it is the single most important flight control habit a pilot can have. Release elevator. Unload before you deflect the ailerons. Unload before you roll. It's fundamental to good airmanship. In an emergency, the action will save your life. Consider the following situations. One, you're rolling out of a base to final turn on approach to landing. Situation number two, you're rolling out of a steep turn on heading looking good. Situation three, your airplane has been upset to an inverted attitude following an encounter with weight turbulence. In the final situation after takeoff, with your aircraft at maximum gross weight, your exuberance during the climbing turn causes the airplane's high wing to stall. The low wing flies over the top into a spin. The first two situations can be considered routine. A basic descending turn and a level steep turn are maneuvers taught and tested to earn a pilot's license. Situations three and four, on the other hand, are real life in-flight pilot emergencies. An inverted attitude or a classic slipping stall spin at low altitude are usually fatal to the pilot. The control inputs you routinely make in situations one and two will form your habits. Do you use the flight controls correctly when directing your airplane to turn? Or instead, do you use the yoke and steer? When you are building flight time, when you are burning av gas and focused on your GPS, your use of the flight controls become your habits. The reflex actions that you will use in situations three and four. If your pilot habits are based upon good airmanship, Upset and unusual attitudes are readily recovered, even at low altitudes. If you have practiced weak stick and rudder skills, if your pilot habits are built upon poor technique, your reflex reactions in situations three and four will most likely result in a tragic outcome. A roll is the fundamental maneuver common to all four situations. A pilot should use the same control input in each of these four situations. Where the rolling out of a turn, recovering from an upset attitude, or reaction to a spin entry, the pilot's correct flight control input should be to direct a roll. With reference to a rolling maneuver, consider first proper control inputs for a rolling maneuver are not obvious to most pilots. 
because this maneuver is not taught in pilot school. To the contrary, fighter pilots are very much aware of control inputs to command a role. They intensely study and practice this maneuver. A rolling maneuver is a big deal to structural engineers. They are very concerned with rolling moments and the flight control inputs that command them. On low the elevator and roll is the definitive airmanship maneuver. A pilot should always unload the elevator, that means release elevator control pressure, before using the ailerons to roll. A sidebar. The rudder has the purpose to control or to counteract yaw. In airplanes that exhibit adverse yaw, rudder and aileron are used together to command a roll. Classic flight instruction teaches pilots to use rudder and aileron together when rolling into and out of turns. However, many modern airplanes do not exhibit adverse yaw. So rudder input is not needed when the ailerons are deflected to command a roll. Key point, that comment does not change stick and rudder skills. Use the rudder when needed as much as needed to control y'all. Let's review again that situation we talked about. First, you're rolling out of your base to final turn. You're rolling out of a level steep turn. Weight turbulence upsets your airplane to an inverted attitude. After takeoff, your exuberance causes the airplane to spin. The control elements in all four of those situations cited are the same, whether rolling out of a turn, recovering an overbanked or inverted attitude, or recognizing and recovering spin entry. The control inputs to recover are exactly the same Neutral elevator, on load, release pressure. Top aileron with rudder when applicable. Another sidebar. When speaking about using flight controls, aviation pundits and educators universally instruct pilots to push or move the stick forward to neutral. I know you are probably good stick, but I bet that probably on your best day, and for sure when you're inverted only 300 feet above the ground, you do not know the stick position for neutral elevator. Instead of pushing, yanking, and jerking on the flight controls, why not allow the airplane to make you look good? The airplane knows angle of attack. The elevator knows neutral. My key point, use your airplane's inherent stability to master airmanship. Learn to unload, release pressure. An important concern of aeronautical engineering is asymmetric loading on each axis of rotation. Asymmetric loading makes flight controls work. It affords the pilot to control a flight. However, when asymmetric loading occurs simultaneously on two or more axes of rotation, extreme loads can develop and challenge the instructional integrity of the airplane. As an example, pilots should not command roll with ailerons and pull on the elevator control at the same time. Consider a fighter pilot's use of the flight controls. Fighter pilots routinely perform maneuvers at the edge of the flight envelope and at incredibly high speeds. Asymmetric loading under those conditions will break even a fighter plane. Unloading the elevator before rolling is a use of flight controls characteristic of pilots who fly those airplanes. Watch military demonstration pilots like the Blue Angels command a roll. Each pilot will bank on flight path and then brake, pull into a turn. A basic turn using NAC tech looks good, 
It feels good. It is how those flight controls should be used. Structural engineers and the best of our best pilots know to avoid asymmetric loading on the flight controls. That simple and most basic concept directs pilots to unload the elevator, then roll. Unload the elevator, then roll is a technique not taught in pilot school. Actually, pilots learn to do just the opposite. In my two decades of instructing pilots on tailwheel and upset recovery, I rarely encounter a pilot who does not pull first to initiate a turn. That poor technique is even more apparent when a pilot fails to unload the elevator before rolling out of a turn. This habit turns deadly when a pilot experiences an unusual overbank or inverted attitude. Never pull from the inverted. It is a fact. Without proper training, pilots always pull from an inverted attitude. It's a human reaction. It's a leading cause of loss of control. Learning to lead a turn with pull on the elevator control reinforces that deadly response to pull from the inverted. Asymmetric loading of flight controls on cross axes is uncomfortable for airplane occupants. Asymmetric loading of flight controls creates excessive loads that can affect structural integrity. Engineers who do structural analysis stay awake nights worrying about those things. Fighter pilots train to avoid it. Asymmetric loading of flight controls is uncomfortable and can be dangerous, yet pilot school does not teach the student pilot to avoid those flight controls. Your pilot's license is said to be a license to learn. In an emergency, you fly like you train. Learn the habits that will extract you from an unusual attitude or upset. Train to use top rudder and aileron to command basic roll. Always unload the elevator before you roll. In my introduction to this series, I made the point that airmanship and aerodynamics is not a step-by-step -step instruction about how to fly an airplane. That's what I call monkey flying. Instead, I invited you to ponder your understanding of using the flight controls. I ask you to be thoughtful about your flying habits. Are you honest about your ability to use stick and rudder? I hope I have caused you to think, ponder, and give serious consideration to how you maneuver your airplane. That approach to airmanship will make you a great stick, a good airman.